South Africa and Bosnia and Somalia and Northern Ireland and the First World War and the Second World War and the Vietnam War and the Arab-Israeli Wars. At least 23 people died. The bigger tribes fight bigger wars, but the principle is the same. Baraguana Hospital at the entrance to Soweto, the biggest black township in South Africa. A bloody weekend with at least 68 lives lost to violence, mainly in Natal and on the East Rand. Tribalism is a political technique human beings devise so we could live in big groups. A very effective technique, but very nasty. Where were you shot? The whole point of tribes is to turn millions of individuals who don't even know one another into a single, powerful, impersonal entity. And violence becomes impersonal, too. Now the person who kills you doesn't even know your name. He knows your tribe, or your race, or your religion, and that's enough. Take the Zulus, for example. Two centuries ago, the Zulus were a single clan of only 1,500 people, quietly herding cattle in the hills of Natal. There were no big tribes in South Africa then. But in the early 1800s, a military genius called Shaka turned the Zulus into a disciplined army, a step that Zulus of later generations reenact at the drop of a hat. With their new kind of army, the Zulus began conquering the neighboring clans. Shaka quickly overran most of Natal. And then something odd happened. The people whom he'd conquered started to think of themselves as Zulus, too. Terror played a part in it, of course, but so did the intoxicating sense of importance that comes from being part of something so big and powerful. Hundreds of thousands of people actually began to believe that they belonged to the same group. So the Zulus suddenly became a fully-fledged tribe. Or nation, if you like that word better. And it wasn't just the Zulus. The wars forced all the clans to merge into big tribes. And in other circumstances, these new tribes, Sutu and Koza and Zulu, might have ended up as a bunch of separate black nations. The map of Southern Africa would have looked like the map of Europe. But it was not to be. Instead, the Europeans arrived and conquered all the black kingdoms. In white-ruled South Africa, blacks were drawn into the cities as cheap labor, and their tribal identities were paved over. All blacks were treated the same, regardless of tribe, and treated very badly. Eventually, it drove them to a revolutionary conclusion that the only way to overcome oppressive white tribalism was to have no tribes at all. One person, one vote. The African National Congress was founded 80 years ago on the principle that everybody who lives in South Africa, black or white, must have equal rights. No special racial privileges, no tribal distinctions. From the 60s on, the ANC was banned and persecuted, but its jailed leader, Nelson Mandela, came to embody the non-tribal ideal. And with the release of Mandela in 1990, the ANC was finally on the road to power. However, there will always be somebody trying to build a political career on appeals to tribalism. And the tribal identities were still there underneath the pavement. It was the white government that appointed Mangasutu Butulezi as leader of the Zulu tribal homeland. And Butulezi played right into their hands. He built up his power base by creating a Zulu nationalist movement called Inkata. And therefore you can trust me because I've never told you lies. Butulezi came to embody the tribal ideal, but many Zulus rejected it and backed the ANC. So in the early 90s, a kind of black civil war broke out and it became clear that white hardliners in the security forces had been passing arms and money to Inkata for years. 
as